Good morning everyone and welcome to our backyard. In today's video I'm going to talk about the blooms and the plants that hummingbirds are most attracted to in our yard at the beginning of June. My name is Crystal and I garden in Zone 9 along the southeast Texas coast, Gulf Coast, south of Houston. And I know we have two female hummingbirds that visit our yard regularly, two different ones. One is really tiny and the other one is our, what I call our normal hummingbird that loves our yard and has been with us for a couple of years. We certainly could have more that come through during the day, but in, but in particular, I know we have those two that frequent the yard regularly. So I would like, you know, we all have different plants throughout the United States where hummingbirds are attracted to because we all grow different plants. And the farther north you get, of course, the different type of plants that are able to grow in the different climates in the different zones. But here along zone nine, at the beginning of June, they absolutely have favorites right now that they are going to. I'm gonna go through all of the plants, but I am gonna talk about their top five favorites right now in our yard. You can hear in the yard, oops, the air conditioner turned on. Let me fix that. There, sorry about that. You probably hear some birds chirping in the background. I have a family of house finches, and then I had some cardinals just fly in. And there's probably about six of those gorgeous red house finches that are in the yard. All right. So let's get started with the list. And I will put the names of all these plants in the description to this video. So if you select the three little dots to open up the description, you will have the names of all these plants. The first one I want to talk about is right here. And this right now happens to be number one in the yard that the hummingbirds absolutely love. And that is porterweed. Porterweed is a member of the verbena family. And it is a very unique plant that has a, a unique blooming structure. It has a long bloom spike, but it only blooms along a very small portion of that bloom spike each day. The interesting thing about porterweed is it refills, the blooms refill with nectar all throughout the day. That is why you see pollinators on it, even though the blooms are in this just little compact area on each stalk, they are on this all day long. The pollinators from your native bees to your butterflies to your hummingbirds. And red, of course, is the hummingbird favorite. And so I see this, I see the hummingbirds on this, and it's particularly fun because it is right off my kitchen window. And I see them here all throughout the day. I have many different colors of porterweed. This is a purple porterweed. This is a blue porterweed. Although it does look a little purple. This I have planted in the landscape and it is a dwarf red porterweed. This is a lavender color with a magenta center and it is called Durham's Blue Eyes. 
I have a coral portaweed. It does look a little bit, it might look a little red, but it is different from the red, oops, from the red porterweed. And I have a recently purchased pink porterweed. So porterweed is the top favorite at the moment. Number two is cardinal climber vine that we have trellised and we plant from seed. The last couple of years, it has bloomed for us early. Typically it doesn't do a major bloom until August, right when the hummingbird migration has started for us and late August. And this red tubular flower is a huge hit with the hummingbirds. And so very early in the morning, when I come out, I have noticed the hummingbirds coming along because we have so many blooms, which is surprising at this time of year. So that is, pro that is number two right now of their favorites. Number three is Roselia or firecracker plant. And this is a favorite of my hummingbird that has been with us for at least a couple of years now. She loves this particular flower, but you can see it is red. It has this tubular shape. It's perfect for hummingbirds. It certainly is a unique plant. <laughs> That's what it looks like. That's its leaf structure. But it blooms all along the tips. Butterflies like this too, but she loves this plant. Number four is Kufia. This is also known as cigar plant, and you can see why they love these blooms. They're long, slender, tubular shaped. This particular variety is called David Verity. I have both David Verity and Manillionaire <laughs> from Proven Winners, and they flower in full sun all of these plants want full sun. And full of nectar, full of blooms, as you can see. And so our, butterf our butterflies and hummingbirds love kufia. And to round out the top five is salvia. Salvia is fantastic for all the pollinators. This one, I've, I have 13, 14 different varieties of salvia in the yard. And this that I'm showing you right here is Amistad. And hummingbirds love salvia. Okay. If you're wanting to attract hummingbirds or pollinators in general to your yard, it's important to have diversity of plants. What we've noticed is the more plants we have that attract our pollinators, the more you'll see. And so the list now, I've gone through the top five in my yard that they're visiting right now. But the next flowers I'm going to show you attract them also because they visit them all throughout the day also. But we've had abundance of those top five blooms and so that's why the hummingbirds are going to those plants because there's so many blooms. The one I have right here 
is a favorite and it is a native. It is called Flame Acanthus and it is just starting to bloom and that's when it typically blooms for me is it starts in the beginning of June and I'm just starting to get the flush of these dainty red tubular shaped blooms. This is also a host plant to the Texas Crescent butterfly, but hummingbirds and butterflies love this flower. The reason it isn't in the top five is because it's just starting to bloom, but they are here and visiting this. Now that the blooms are open, starting to open. Next on the list is the coral honeysuckle vine. And this vine was a huge hit. It was number one in March because very few blooms are blooming for us in March. And pollinators of all kinds love this native vine. I only have a, f I mean, it still blooms and it will bloom all summer and into the fall, but that first flush of, of spring blooms, it is absolutely covered. And you can see the remnants. It's now being covered with berries, which the birds will eat. I have noticed even though I only have a few patches, <laughs> my hummingbird comes to this and makes sure she gets the coral honeysuckle blooms, even though there's very, you know, it's, it's sparse right now. It has way more berries than blooms, but depending on the time of year, that is a huge hit. The next one is another native. And I am in the sun right now. I apologize. This is a Turk's cap. And Turk's cap has started to bloom within the last couple of weeks. And when this is covered fully, oh my goodness, the hummingbirds just methodically go from flower to flower to flower. But it has this nice little red flower that doesn't open. It looks like a small hibiscus flower that just doesn't open. Both the Turk's cap and the coral honeysuckle are natives for us. And I did two separate videos, one on the Turk's cap and one on the coral honeysuckle that I'll link so you can see the videos that specifically talking about them. Another important flower or bloom is the firebush. And my firebush is just starting to bloom. But all summer long, this will bloom and bloom and bloom into the fall, actually until the frost. And my small leaf firebush is blooming before the larger leaf firebush. But I can't stress how important of a plant this is for all of the pollinators. Once it just really is in full bloom. It also creates little berries after the blooms, after it is fertilized. And those berries are eaten by the birds. I love having firebush in the yard. I will see hummingbirds come down and sample lantana. Lantana is a favorite of butterflies, but hummingbirds still will come down. When I say down, it's because it's, <laughs> it's lower. Hummingbirds are also known to 
like Esperanza, Esperanza that I have, this variety is called Lydia. It's a, a smaller variety of Esperanza. This has a nice yellow tubular shaped flower. And you know, my Esperanza is right beside my porter weed and they go to the porter weed <laughs> and occasionally we'll come down to the Esperanza. So I'm glad that I have this and I know if I didn't have the porter weed, they would certainly be all over this. But that number one bloom just attracts them. And maybe because I have it right next to it, they're like, okay. <laughs> I prefer the porter weed over this beautiful, beautiful yellow flower. Another tubular shaped flower that they go to is Terenia or wishbone flower. So I have this flower in my summer garden because it is a nice trailer for containers. I do see them go to it, not as much as my other flowers, but I really like having the Terenia because it works in containers, both as a spiller and a filler. In some parts of the United States, hummingbirds will go to petunias. And I know this because you read about it. They do not go to my petunias because they have so many other blooms to choose from that I've never seen a hummingbird at a petunia yet. Doesn't mean they won't, but I haven't seen them at the petunia yet. Most of the plants that are hummingbird attractors are full sun plants. This one happens to be in partial shade. It gets some pretty beautiful morning sun but this is known as a shrimp plant. And shrimp plants, this is where the hummingbird comes. They come underneath to that pretty little white flower that's underneath that shrimp colored bract on top of it. This is also a host plant to the Texas, the Texas crescent butterfly. Even though it isn't flowering right now, I do have to mention coleus. I will pinch back my coleus blooms until late August, typically, but hummingbirds love, and all pollinators love, the very unassuming coleus blooms. And so I wanted to include this, even though they're not blooming for me right now. Those of you that have coleus and always pinch back your flowers. And if you have hummingbirds, you might want to consider letting them flower. The leaves don't look as great after they start flowering because they do then put their energy into making seed. And as you can see here, I have <laughs> some volunteer coleus that come up from seed, interestingly. But for me, I do let them flower later in the summer just because of how many pollinators that are attracted by coleus. Plus, I kind of wanted to show you this. It's looking so beautiful right now. Love how this shade garden looks. My cannas have, canna lilies have just started to bloom. And they do like to visit canna blooms. I have seen them visit butterfly bush.
and also pintas. Some of you have told me in the comments that you've seen hummingbirds at your Tithonia. I have my butterflies all over the Tithonia, but I haven't seen hummingbirds yet. And I've had, this is now the second season that I have had Tithonia flowers in my garden. I know the sun is coming out and so the color is getting washed out. Sorry about that. So I know you have told me, some of you anyway, that they really like the Tithonia in your yard. Oh, I love all these neon orange blooms that are just starting to open. Hummingbirds also like hibiscus flowers. This is a tropical hibiscus that's going to be opening today. This one's a yellow with a red center. So pretty. So right now, those are the flowers that my hummingbirds are going to. As you can see here, butterflies absolutely love porterweed also. What are the flowers in your yard that you've noticed the hummingbirds are frequenting? As I mentioned, I believe it's very important, if you can, to have diversity. The more diversity of plants you have, the more success you're going to have with attracting hummingbirds to your yard. My husband also observes all the different pollinators, butterflies, hummingbirds we have in the yard. And he believes that it's because we have so many different native plants and plants that attract them specifically. And I have to agree. So certainly hummingbird feeders, definitely remember to keep them clean if you put them out really important but having the plants and the diversity of plants brings in the little bugs and gnats that they eat that they love and it just makes for a habitat that is so inviting so let me know in the comments what plants you're seeing hummingbirds frequent in your yard. And I hope you all have a wonderful day today. And I hope to see you again soon. I'm going to end by zooming in on the green anole that is at the top of my long pole.